All right. So we're going to start um, the whole second part of the course. Uh, and basically what we're going to do in the second part is talk about the effect that different loads, uh, different kinds of loads, have on, uh, on beams. Um, and so we're going to start with uh, axial deformation. So up to this point, we've described internal loads within a solid body to find our, our resultant uh, forces um, and moments. Uh, we've looked at the stresses created by those loads and made some stress diagrams and done stress transformations. And then we looked at strain in solid materials, the ways that um, stress uh, affected um, the deformation of solid materials. Uh, and so now we're going to really dig into different kinds of loads uh, and the way that they stress and deform solid bodies. So if we go back and look uh, from, you know, basically the first day, we've got these different kinds of um, moments and forces here. We've got a normal force, if we think of this like a split beam here, We've got a normal force, a torsional moment that's twisting the, the beam around. We've got bending moments and shear forces. Um, because they're a little bit simpler uh, to deal with, we're going to start with the axial forces. First, the axial normal force uh, and then the torsional moment. So. In some ways, we've done some of this work already, uh, and so we'll move fairly quickly through today's lecture. Uh, but a beam that's under a com compressive or tensile load uh, will experience uh, a relative displacement of delta, right? That's going to be the, not the strain. The strain is a ratio, but here we're talking about an actual deformation. How much longer is this going to get? Uh, if we combine our definition of strain with stress uh, in an axial member, right, the force P over that cross-sectional area, we can come up with a simple expression for delta uh, in terms of the force applied. So we'll say strain, our definition of strain is delta over L, the deformation over the length of the beam. Um, <clears throat> That gets us to this expression here, delta equals epsilon times L. Now we can use this stress-strain relationship um, to put to replace strain here in that uh, relationship, and then we're going to replace stress with P over A. So we get delta equals epsilon L. We then replace epsilon to get delta equals stress over the modulus of elasticity times L. And then we replace stress with P over A. And we get that delta, that is the deformation, the change in length here, is the force applied uh, times the length. So those are both going to make that deformation bigger right because there's more material and because there's a larger force and then the stiffness of the material the modulus of elasticity uh, and the size of it cross-sectionally are both going to reduce that uh, um, that deformation um, so there is a very basic expression for axial deformation now notice that we've assumed here uh, a bunch of stuff that we assumed in uh, coming up with this equation and coming up with that equation. That is that we're in the yield uh, part of the stress-strain diagram. We have a constant modulus E, constant cross-sectional A, uh, and a load that's applied only on both ends. All right, so here we get a more generalizable equation. Uh, it looks pretty nasty, and this the green guy here doesn't like it. Um, but it's really not that bad. I mean, if, if we know P as an expression of X or any of these others, we would basically multiply and divide our expressions and then integrate that, which is, in, at least in our class, is not going to be, um, isn't going to be a terribly difficult, difficult integration. 
but that that allows us to expand it to a more uh, general uh, situation. Uh, and if the bar has multiple cross sections like this one here, uh, we can sum that equation or the equation, the simplified equation on the previous page across those different sections. In other words, if I apply a force P here, um, each one of these sections is going to be deformed by a certain amount. Uh, and I can simply find how far this section is deformed and add it to how far that section is deformed. And then I'll get the total deformation delta uh, of the bar. And that's it for this short one.